All right, on today's video, guys, we're gonna rebuild this HX, HX35 I've got. Got this from a scrapyard, and it's good. It doesn't need to be rebuilt, but I'm gonna rebuild it because I'm gonna replace the one on my truck with this one. I have an exhaust housing over there that does not have a welded wastegate like my turbo does, so I'm gonna replace the exhaust housing at the same time, so I'll have a wastegate again because the compound without a wastegate doesn't really work as good as it should. So first off, you need to get to the center cartridge, which is probably the hardest part because the compressor housing and the exhaust housing are on there pretty good. You may have to use a little bit of heat. But once you get to this, once you get this far, uh, you need to be really tedious in everything that you're doing. First off, you're gonna need a socket that fits this. It's a 13 millimeter. And you're gonna need a pair of vice grips or channel locks like I have here to grab the nut on the back side. I don't know what size it is, but it is a 12 point, so if you have a nut that fits it, that would work out better. Just grab it there. And these are reverse threads, so you're gonna have to put your uh, drill in tight mode, and then an impact works best because it'll just bust it loose real quick. Once you get the nut off, you can pull the compressor wheel straight off, and it should slide off. Be careful not to hurt any of the blades. These here are where they balance the wheel. They take a notch out of it to make it balance. So don't be scared if you have more of these or less of these notches cut out of it. From here, you're just gonna pull the exhaust wheel shaft right out. It may take a little persuasion. And there you go. Now you have the exhaust wheel and the shaft out. Now I don't know the history on this turbo because I just got it from a scrap yard, but it seems to look really well. Um, it may have needed an oil change more often than it got, because you can see the burnt oil on there, but other than that, it looks pretty good. Now that you got the shaft out, you're gonna have to start taking some snap rings out. Now these snap ring pliers I got from Harbor Freight for a whop of $9. And I'm telling you, you need to get them because doing this without it, Going to be very stressful but you can do it if you take a pair of needle nose pliers and uh, just kind of jerry-rig them to work now these are cheap harbor freight pliers so they're not the greatest but they will get the job done just like that all right I keep all your parts separated get the snap ring out I'm going to start getting this piece out here. This holds your thrust washer in place. Now what I did to get this out, take your shaft, shove it in from the back, and just push it out just like that, and turn it over. Now be very careful because you want to see how everything goes together. Pull that out, turn it over. There's your thrust washer. Turn it over. Another washer. And now you get to where your journal bearings are with your other snap ring. And this is why you need a good set of snap ring pliers because you have really tiny snap rings on both sides that holds the journal bearings in. Now let's take a look at this. This is the first washer here. This is the oil deflector plate here. And you have a washer here. When we go to reinstall this, we're gonna replace this oil deflector plate and all of this. Plus we're gonna replace the thrust washer itself. Just remember which way they go. All right, so now we're gonna start taking the snap rings out. One thing you need to note is there's a rubber O-ring in here that we need to take out before we start doing snap rings because we're gonna replace it with an O-ring that comes in the kit. Now one thing you may need to do is I had to grind these tips down to fit in the small holes of these tiny snap rings. All right, when you finally get these out, be careful that when you get it up out of the slot that they don't go flying off, because that's what just happened to this one. All right, now that we got that out, we can get the journal bearing out. Now sometimes they'll just come out like that, or you may have to persuade it a little bit. I didn't find it like that right there and that's what the bearing looks like this one's in very very good shape like I said this turbo was not bad 
It's just I had no idea how long I'd been sitting in the scrapyard. So I decided it was a good idea to rebuild it and a good opportunity to make another video. Stop it. We have a journal bearing on the front and the back side of the compress the uh, housing. So next you're going to want to flip it over and get the other snap ring out. Set it to the side. And you need to pull that journal bearing out as well. There we go. Perfect. And that's how you disassemble a cartridge on HX35 Turbo. I'm sure most journal bearing turbos are about the same. <clears throat> now I'm going to go clean this up with some brake cleaner. Uh, make sure there's no dirt or anything I don't need in there. And then we'll get back to reassembling the turbo. Now that it's all cleaned up, everything clean on the inside, you need to make sure that you got a little cup of oil, something you can oil everything with. Now, first off, we're going to go to this side of the turbo. We're going to start with one journal bearing. We're going to lube it up real nice and good. And drop it down the hole. Now it doesn't have to be oriented any specific way. If it was a ball bearing turbo, it would. But because it's a journal bearing, it doesn't matter. We're going to take a snap ring. Try not to lose said snap ring. Make sure it's seated real good down in there. All right, now that journal bearing is in there and the snap ring is in, next part comes assembling the thrust bearing and all that good fancy stuff. This bearing here, we're gonna make sure, it's not really a bearing, it's just a washer. Lube it nice and good. Point goes down and the hole just like that. This one here, we have to install a brass ring on it. So we're gonna lube it up, get it good and lubed. We're gonna put this ring on there. Make sure not to break it, because it will not be good whenever it's broke. Put that upside down. And just press it in there. Like that. Take the oil deflector. Press it in. Just like that. Now it has an oil deflector on it. I'm going to take this O-ring, lube it up, get nice and oiled, press it down in there, make sure it's seated good, take the thrust washer, the oiling hole, it has a roll pin right there, and that's how you know how this goes in there. The oiling hole has to batch up to the hole there. Just drop it in here. It sits in there just like that. The oil deflector. The lip goes inside that hole. And just like that. Now from here, I'm going to put this big snap ring in. And then we're going to go to the back side and put the second and final journal bearing in place. I got the front snap ring in. I'm going to turn it back over and install the final journal bearing. Daddy, you have to. Hang on, buddy. Can you nice and lubed up. Can you add a it? Slide it right down in there. Make sure it's straight. Take the flashlight, make sure it's all the way down in there. We're going to install the final snap ring. Stop it. Final snap ring.
I make sure it's all the way seated, just like that. I know y'all probably can't see in there, but and that's how you replace the bearings and the thrust washer on one of these turbos. I wish I could have found a 360 degree thrust bearing because that helps when you're compounding one of these, uh, but I couldn't find one. Anyways, the kit that I got to rebuild this was on Amazon. Just typed in HX35 rebuild kit and the uh, first one that popped up is what I got. It was like 40 bucks and arrived next day. So we'll see how it works. I don't know if it'll be good or bad, but we'll find out. Go ahead. Go ahead and finish installing this. We have to replace this ring here. And to get it off, you can use a uh, flathead screwdriver or the snap ring pliers. And just press it off and voila, there it is. Take the new one. This one don't have to be oiled. It's going on the exhaust side. Be careful not to break it. Slide it on there. And there you go. Now we're going to slide this back in there. I'm going to oil it. Oh no. Oh no. Alright, pause it. Alright, before we go ahead and put this in there, I'm going to oil up where the bearings go liberally you want lots of oil on there Daddy. Oh, i almost forgot Daddy. can't forget to put your heat Daddy. shield back on there hang on buddy do you need a water i don't need a water thank he you though he has a dr pepper babe slide it in there like that once it gets to the bottom it's going to be a little hard taking it oh my gosh just just stop all right, so when you go ahead and put that in there, the shaft, make sure it gets seated all the way in there. That compression ring you put on there is gonna have to get compressed, so that's why the last 16th of an inch to an eighth is gonna be a little bit more difficult. Then you can go ahead and slide your new compressor, your compressor wheel back on if you have a new one. It'd be a good time to put it on. And then tighten your nut down. Remember it's reverse thread. Hold the back nut and then take your impact, run it down, uh, and then just do a quick little hit on it. Uh, I'm not sure of the torque spec. I'll have to look at it and uh, maybe I'll put it in the description. Anyways, that's going to do it for the turbo rebuild on a stock HX35. Uh, next video, we're going to be swapping out the exhaust housing and uh, putting this turbo on the Fummins. And we'll see if I did a good or bad job on the rebuild. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys.